Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This video is about maternal and fetal complications of systemic lupus erythematosus from the talk article. What is systemic lupus erythematosus? It is an autoimmune condition that has multi-organs involvement. It is approximately 10 times more common in women than in men and is often diagnosed during the childbearing years. The prevalence of SLE in women of childbearing years is around 1 in 500. What are the causes of SLE? The exact cause of SLE remains unknown, but it has been proposed that an environmental trigger such as ultraviolet light or viral infection, for example, Epstein-Barr virus, combined with the genetic predisposition forms the basis of the disease process. There is 25% concordance for SLE among monozygotic twins. Now we will study the American College of Rheumatology classification criteria for SLE. The first criteria is that of the malar rash, which are fixed erythema, flat or raised over the malar eminences, tending to spare the nasolabial folds. The discoid rash is erythematous raised patches with adherent keratotic scaling and follicular plugging. The atrophic scaling may occur in older lesions. These patients may present with photosensitivity, which results in skin rash as a result of unusual reaction to the sunlight by the patient history or physician observation. The oral or nasopharyngeal ulcers are usually painless. There is non-erosive arthritis of two or more peripheral joints with a tenderness, swelling or effusion. These patients are diagnosed to have pleuritis when there is convincing history of pleuritic pain or rubbing heard by the physician or evidence of pleural effusion or pericarditis documented by echocardiogram or a rub or evidence of pericardial effusion. These patients are diagnosed to have the renal disorders when there is persistent proteinuria of more than 0.5 gram per day or if there is more than plus 3 proteinuria if quantification not performed or we may have cellular costs. The neurological disorders include the seizures and psychosis. The hematological disorders include hemolytic anemia with reticulocytosis, leukopenia, lymphopenia and thrombocytopenia. The immunological disorders are diagnosed when we have anti-double-stranded DNA or lupus anticoagulin or anti-cardiolipin antibodies positive results. The last criteria is that of the abnormal titer of antinuclear antibody by immunofluorescence. Now, how to do pre-pregnancy counseling? NSAID can cause infertility by means of inhibition of cyclooxygenase, which control ovulation, known as luteinized unruptured follicle syndrome. So, women who have been diagnosed or who have been investigated for infertility we need to give them advice to stop the NSAID because it may cause the problem in her fertility. What are the fetal complications of SLE? SLE is known to increase the risk of spontaneous miscarriage. The risk of miscarriage and stillbirth in pregnancy is complicated by lupus varies in the literature from 6 to 35 percent and from 0 to 22 percent respectively. It can cause fetal growth restriction in about 35 percent of the cases. The other complications include increased rate of sudden intrauterine death and the preterm delivery. The risk of the PPROM with SLE is about 20%. Mothers with SLE are at increased risk of having fetus with a severe high drops and MCA pulse peak systolic velocity suggests severe anemia. Another fetal complication is that of the congenital heart block which is associated with maternal anti-rho-law autoantibodies which occur in 2-3% to of the fetuses of mother with anti-rho-law antibody and there is a recurrence of 16% in the subsequent pregnancies. Congenital heart block develops between 18-28 to 28 weeks of gestation. Neonatal lupus rash is another complication of it and this forms a part of Neonatal lupus erythematosus spectrum manifesting as annular inflammatory lesions. This lesion is most commonly seen on the face and scalp. The skin biopsy is typical of that of cutaneous lupus. What are the maternal complications of SLE with the pregnancy? Pulmonary hypertension is of great concern and the maternal mortality rate has been quoted to be as high as 40% but the recent data has shown that this rate is about 33%. 
Women should be advised not to conceive during a period of active disease, particularly with the lupus nephritis, because of worse maternal and fetal outcomes. In general terms, women with SLE have two to four folds higher rate of complications compared to those without this disease. Now we will talk about the investigations for the assessment of the disease activity in pre-pregnancy consultation. The cardiac complications include pulmonary hypertension, valvular heart disease, cardiomyopathy, and we do assessment by echocardiography. The respiratory complications include pulmonary fibrosis and that may need a chest x-ray or CT scan. Also, we may need to do the lung function test if there is underlying restrictive respiratory involvement. For renal complications assessment, we do urine dipstick and protein creatine ratio. We document and quantify the presence of hematuria and we do renal function tests to assess the pre-existing renal dysfunction. For hematology or immunology, we do specifically the full blood count and the different autoantibodies checks, uh, tests like anticardiolipin antibody, lupus anticoagulant and anti-double-stranded DNA and anti-rho and anti-la antibodies complement C3 and C4 levels. The termination of pregnancy or preterm delivery should be considered in the presence of uncontrolled hypertension and or worsening renal function despite optimal pharmacological therapy. Now how to monitor pregnant women with a stable SLE? For those individuals with a stable disease, four weekly review of the disease activity and regular assessment of the fetal growth, blood pressure and proteinuria are appropriate. How to do fetal monitoring? For those women who are anti rho law positive, the fetal heart rate should be monitored and recorded at each visit and fetal echocardiography assessment made at 18 to 20 weeks and 28 weeks of gestation. A uterine artery Doppler should be first carried out at 20 weeks and repeated 4 weeks later if any abnormality is found. Now how to do comparison of pregnancy and SLE related changes? In pregnancy, the anemia is due to physiological hemodilution. In SLE, there is anemia of chronic disease or hemolytic anemia. Proteinuria in pregnancy may either be due to preeclampsia or it can be physiological increase of the baseline proteinuria related to pregnancy or withdrawal of ACE inhibitors. In SLE, the proteinuria may be due to nephritis. In pregnancy, there is mechanical arthralgia or effusion and in lupus activity, we have inflammatory synovitis. Thrombocytopenia in pregnancy may either be gestational or it can be due to HELP syndrome or preeclampsia. In SLE, thrombocytopenia may be due to immune thrombocytopenia or APS. In pregnancy, we may have melasma or facial blushing, while in lupus activity, we may have the malar rash. Seizures in pregnancy may be due to eclampsia. In SLE, it can be due to neuropsychiatric lupus cerebral venous thrombosis. Now, how to avoid the risk of thromboembolism? Women who have had previous as venous thromboembolism should receive thromboprophylaxis with a low molecular weight heparin such as injection glycine throughout the pregnancy and for six weeks postpartum or until converted back to warfarin. How to do the management of SLE flares? The risk of an SLE flare in pregnancy is increased with active disease in three to six months prior to conception. It can be managed expectantly with the medical management and adjustment to the drug therapy. Now, how to distinguish preeclampsia from the lupus nephritis? The presence of hematuria or red cell casts as well as rise in anti-double-stranded DNA titer or fall in the complement levels may help to distinguish this from preeclampsia. Now, when is renal biopsy indicated? Despite these distinguishing features, the only definitive and reliable investigations that can be used to distinguish preeclampsia from the lupus nephritis is renal biopsy. But this is not generally taken during pregnancy because of the complications associated with it. Now, review of the literature suggests that most common indications for the delivery is preeclampsia followed by the fetal distress and fetal growth restriction and premature rupture of membranes. What pharmacological agents are used in the treatment of SLE? First is that of the corticosteroids, which are anti-inflammatory and immunosuppressive, and the placental transfer is there, especially in case of the beta-methasone and dexamethasone, prednisolone and hydrocortisone cross less well. Is there any factor on fetus? Long-term follow-up show no significant neurodevelopmental delay.
Regarding the safety in pregnancy and breastfeeding, it is written in the talk article that women can breastfeed safely as only a small amount is found in the breast milk. And when to stop or continue? We can continue it during pregnancy. What are the fetal adverse effects of steroids? The common adverse effects include the risk of congenital malformations. Another risk is that of the neonatal adrenal suppression, but we have very little evidences for these adverse effects. The maternal adverse effects of steroids include weight gain, immunosuppression, acne, gastrointestinal irritation, and increased glucose intolerance. Another drug used in SLE is that of the NSAID, which inhibits cyclooxygenase. The placental transfer is there. And regarding the effects uh, on fetus, it is written that premature closure of the ductus arteriosus is a side effect if taken beyond 32 weeks. Regarding the safety in pregnancy and breastfeeding, it is written in the talk article that use it with caution in the first and second trimester, avoid after 32 weeks of gestation, and it is safe post delivery provided no renal involvements are there. And when to stop or continue, ideally discontinue prior to conception. Another drug is that it be azathioprine. The mechanism of action is that it is immunosuppressive agent and it prevents the cell proliferation and inhibits lymphocyte function. The placental transfer is there. It can cross the placenta, but the fetal liver lacks enzyme to convert it into active metabolite. Regarding the effects on the fetus, no cases of the congenital abnormalities have been detected. Regarding its safety in the pregnancy and breastfeeding, it is written in the talk article that it is safe in pregnancy and breastfeeding, but use at the minimum effective dose. Now, when to stop or continue? Do not stop without the guidance from rheumatology staff and it is safe to continue. The methotrexate mechanism of action is that it is an uh, anti-metabolite and it inhibits the cell-mediated immunity and it doesn't cross the placenta. The effect on the fetus is that it causes neural tube defect if used in the early pregnancy. Regarding its safety in the pregnancy and breastfeeding, it is written that it is contraindicated in pregnancy. No data on effect in breastfeeding has been found. Now, when to stop or continue? Stop prior to conception. Another drug is that the mycophenolate mofetil, which inhibits purine synthesis. It crosses placenta and is excreted in the breast milk. It is associated with miscarriage and congenital malformations. So avoid in the pregnancy and breastfeeding and stop or change to azothioprine prior to conception but seek guidance from the rheumatology staff. The cyclophosphamide is an alkylating agent that crosses placenta and is excreted in the breast milk. It is teratogenic and there is increased rate of miscarriage and congenital abnormalities. It is excreted in the breast milk, so it should be avoided altogether in the pregnancy and stop prior to conception. But in women with the flare, consult rheumatology staff. Another drug is that of the cyclosporin. Mechanism of action is that uh, it causes the T-cell mediated response and that prevents the formation of interleukin-2. It crosses placenta and is found in the fetal blood. The main problem reported is that it can cause the prematurity and low birth weight, but this may relate to underlying disease. The treatment used extensively in the transplant patient and autoimmune disease, breastfeeding probably is safe. So when to stop or continue? Seek advice from rheumatology or nephrology staff regarding its usage. Another drug is that the hydroxychloroquine, which disrupts lysosome presentation and the processing of the antigen. It doesn't cross the placenta. There is no increase in the congenital abnormalities associated with it. Regarding its safety in pregnancy and breastfeeding, it is written that uh, it causes withdrawal in the pregnant patients and that may precipitate the flare. So, safe to continue and patient may breastfeed safely. The advice is that uh, the patient can continue throughout the pregnancy and do not withdraw. Now, something about drug-induced lupus. The pathophysiology of drug-induced lupus is not completely understood, but in the case of hydrolazine, it is uh, thought to be caused by the formation of antinuclear antibodies to H1 and H3 to 4 complex. Now, we will talk about the postpartum care. This includes ongoing management and treatment of underlying pregnancy-induced hypertension, a risk assessment and prophylaxis regime for thrombosis, particularly in the women with APS or who have previously stiffed the thrombosis or nephrotic syndrome. 
Now we'll talk about the role of MDT. The management of SLE and pregnancy should be undertaken in a multidisciplinary setting. The involvement of obstetrician and physician with experience of managing SLE in the pregnancy improve the outcome for mother and the fetus. So thank you so much. That was all about SLE in the pregnancy from Talk Article. Subscribe on Ops and Gynae. Thank you so much. Allah Hafiz.